thanks for joining us. We're in the studio of Frank Wimberly, and he's here to join us to talk a little bit about Cinque Gallery and about his work. Uh, Frank, I was wondering, when did you hear about Cinque Gallery? If you can recall, was there an artist that told you about the space? I believe it was uh, a person who was uh, di director of her own gallery at the time in her apartment. And all I can remember from her moving from that place, she gave a show at Lever House. Uh, I was in that show with some other uh, Cinque artists. Ah. And uh, I remember James Denmark was there and uh, he was astounded by something I had done, which I have in my garage right now. Mm -hmm. It's been there all these years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have no need to show it to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but now it was this woman who was running a gallery who told you about CK. Yeah. And then what happened? Did you start to go to the openings or how did, how did you make the connection then? Well, uh, I became interested in what she was doing. And uh, my interest led to me receiving invitations to various shows. And uh, there was a lot of talk about Romare Bearden at the time. And I wanted to see or know something about him. So uh, when I got the opportunity and got over my, uh, it wasn't a fear, but uh, having to travel to New York from Queens at that, that time, uh, uh, I didn't know my way that well. Where did you show when you had your solo exhibition at Senke? Do you recall what venue they were in at the time? Which, which of the, because they've been in several, you know, over the years. years. <laughs> several years, yes. yes. Um, 19, I'm not sure now. About 83 or so, I think it was, or 84 yeah. or so. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And do you think that was on 72nd Street? Do you recall, was it when it was on 72nd Street? I think it was 72nd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was in several places. Mm -hmm. And I remember that the first time I went, I had heard about it. But I went there specifically to see Bearden. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gallery had gotten smaller. And uh, I noticed that uh, Ruth Jett, I believe it was, had moved into another room so she could be near. She was in control and wanted to be in control always. Ruth Jett was the director for so many years, yeah. probably over 20 years. That's she right. really kept that space going. Yeah. yeah. Did you find that there was a community of artists that were there that you ended up meeting and kind of getting involved with networking? Yeah, well, uh, I wanted to become more involved because living here in Queens, I was doing my own stuff, you know, but I heard things about other people and I wanted to see what they were doing. And uh, I was very pleased with that because uh, they were doing some great things. Good shows, yeah. Now, the first time I saw a solo show of your work was out in Bridgehampton. I saw your collages there. Yeah, and I they was a were guy. so impactful. And you know, as a young person, again, I was a teenager. Yes, you were. Um, seeing your work, in fact, the first time I saw your work, your son told me, "Come on, Sag Harbor." We were on the beach. He said, "Come on, the old folks are having a party." <laughs> the old folks. Now, you all were probably like in your thirties or forties at the time, but anyway, you know, it's all relative. He said, "Come on." Let's look at them. Yeah, and you have all those windows, so you didn't know we were peering in at you. A whole bunch of us came up from the beach. Yeah. And what really amazed me as a, again, 13, 14 year old, was your artwork. I had never seen a home filled with artwork by a black person, male or female, <laughs> that I, was so I stunning. Was, I was black even then. You were black. Yeah. You were very black. <laughs> <laughs> It had nothing to do with the sun or anything. No. But um, I wanted to change 
what was happening. And uh, I think a lot of people were uh, trying to find their way as well. But I was more interested in abstract work. And uh, not a lot of us were. But so uh, I made a point to go to the Metro, not to, not to the Met. I didn't go there often, but I went to the Whitney. Whitney. And the Whitney had all the champions, you know, de Kooning, Klein, and I used to go and stand in front of Picasso's big uh, de Guernica, I think yes, it was. Right. And, um, I couldn't believe I was standing there seeing it, you know, because I'd read so much about it. I did a lot of reading and I was trying to catch up with what they were doing. Uh, the uh, New York Abstract Expressions. Uh, and that's what impressed me most. One of the things I do remember about Sanke was that they really did show all kinds of art. You know, it wasn't just figuration, even with right. Bearden and Ernie. But of course, Norman Lewis was one of the founders, and Norman was, it was. an absolute brilliant abstract artist. But uh, it was very rich, you know, it seems to me, in terms of just uh, even the level, in terms of, of some folks were probably a little more older, but still emerging, <laughs> you know, because back then Black folks weren't showing. You That's know, right. you, could, you could be an emerging artist at 50 or 60 if you hadn't been showing. And then you had younger artists that they were showing also. Uh, so they really were taking and taking care of a gap of African-Americans that were not being yeah, seen. Yeah. But one of the things I do remember, Frank, was the summer show that they would have in Sag Harbor. They had several of them, but one of them was at your house. Can you talk about that uh, particular that show day? Was, uh, well, in the first place, that house was constructed and designed for art. Uh, we had more wall space than anything else, but the front of the house was entirely glass, and that was almost unheard of at that time. I loved Frank Lloyd Wright, so he was uh, my point guy, uh, but I also loved Japanese architecture. At the rear of the house, there's also a deck and uh, some of the work was hung on the rear of the house so people could walk around. And that was part of uh, my ingenuity in designing a house. Am I allowed to say that? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. But I wanted to be able to walk around my house. You couldn't walk all the way around on mm -hmm. the deck. But I built a deck that was in front of the house, but on the side, on both sides of the house, mm -hmm. uh, you could actually sit out there and view uh, what would be my neighbor's house if you wanted to. Or the woods. On the other side, yes. was all mm -hmm. forest, mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful trees. At the rear of the house, uh, there are all, also trees. That's where people could walk up along the deck and walk in front of the artwork and view it. Yeah, those cells, I think, were really quite uh, you know, good for, for the gallery. They they did several summers out there. I can yeah. call them renting other homes even yes. to show the work. And in fact, my parents bought one of your pieces at one of those sales. And uh, I'm happy oh, to say that I have that piece fortunate. now. <laughs> yes, that was fortunate, <laughs> fortunate for me too, because now it's I own it. That's right, and very happy to have it. Um, what were some of the other things that you recall about the Saint K community? Um, were you meeting artists coming into the city? You were saying from Queens. Um, who did you begin to meet? What are what are the other artists that you, you started to meet at that time? I think for the first time uh, I met Al Loving. I, I didn't know Al that well. And I knew everybody talked about him. You know, he was a guy that, if he walked into your show, he was very imposing, and you felt as if your show was a success <laughs> uh, because he was a su success. 
And uh, the other time, one other time, the most important time was a time that I was showing there and in comes this guy that I had never met before. And he says, uh, where has this guy been? You know, oh, I love that, you know, because here's somebody that wants to see what I've got. And he was impressed with it. Uh, that was Herb Gentry. Oh my so gosh, was, yes, of course. And uh, his wife, I think, was also there. Mm -hmm. I believe he's in the show also, in the Cinque show. Yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But also an important thing that happened at that show was when um, the actor from uh, from Mississippi, who was very influential in Hollywood. Freeman? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman, yeah. But he came in with uh, uh, Mo Miller. Oh. Who was a jazz yes. pianist? Oh, yes. Who I loved, you know. And I was very happy because I had just done a painting called On Hearing Mulgrew. <laughs> it was the first painting in the show. Uh -huh. So he had an opportunity to see what mm -hmm. I had. He said, Why did you name it uh, On Hearing Mulgrew? Mm -hmm. I said, Because the man was a fantastic pianist. Yes. And he was showing downtown at the time. Mm -hmm. So he came in with Morgan. Oh, oh wonderful. 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 So you're meeting people at oh, the gallery, yeah, oh, every, yeah. not just other artists, but other musicians and, and collectors. Yeah. Well, that was the well, same. You know, me and musicians. Yes. Uh, when I had my party up here in Shag Harbor, the music was going full tilt. <laughs> it was always jazz. And it was always miles. Of you could say that too. Uh, who I had met, also. and I had met uh, some of his musicians, and I also bought some of my work, as a matter of fact. So wonderful. And so, tell us about a little bit about your uh, beginnings. I, I believe you had said that your mother was instrumental in you. My mother. Uh, into the arts. She did small paintings. But she was also interested in doing uh, stained glass. She put those things together. She did pottery. And that's when uh, she used to make uh, simple pottery that uh, everybody who was trying to learn pottery at the time, they would do that. You know, they didn't use the, the wheel. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted to be more professional in the ceramics. So uh, I had read about a potter by the name of uh, Peter Bukos, who was fantastic because he was right up my alley. I wanted to do pottery just like him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, I met people in Santa Barbara. I met a woman by the name of Rose Slifka, who was a writer. And she wrote for the East Hampton Star. Uh, I think from time to time she would write for the New York Times. So uh, she was telling me, giving me hints on how to do a career. You know, in she arts. says, first of all, you've got to be in New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's where. And then again, Sink it kind of helped you to do that. Rush out into New York. Come into New York. Now, I just want to go back and just talk about mom and her stained glass windows because I'm thinking of this in terms of collaging, yeah. bringing these pieces together to, to make collages. When did you start to make collages? Uh, I started to make collages in order to teach myself to paint because painting is a, is a construction of layers of paint. So I wanted my paintings to look like the paintings that were being done at the time, mm -hmm. uh, to introduce uh, layers and levels of paint, but instead do it on paper. So I would paint on paper and then uh, 
secure them with the glue. Or some I might use Elmer's glue, or I might use uh, if I wanted to be artistic and call myself an artist, I would use Golden's uh, matte medium or oh, something right. like that, you know. And uh, that would cause uh, a reaction that the, the, the paper would ripple, or if you wanted to remove a piece of paper to for a collage, uh, you could wait for it to almost dry and then tear it off. And when you tear it off, depending on which way you tear it, it's going to leave an edge, a deco edge, I think you mentioned that at one point, or it's going to leave the pool of dry glue or medium. That was one of your techniques. That was one of your techniques. Yeah, and I noticed too that in some of your works you really use pumice. Yes. And you really get involved in not only the apostle of the paint, but also building up that surface with That's pumice. Right. Uh, I, now, the use of the pumice came from seeing what Picasso did, because he used sand quite a bit in his painting. Uh, that was breaking away from the tradition of using oil paint. Uh, so I went, I, I used acrylic instead. Acrylic. I use acrylic to this day mm -hmm. because you can make changes. Um, you can do a painting tonight and tomorrow morning. It is different or it is finished <laughs> if you want it to be finished. Mm -hmm. So layering really is important. Uh, important in the work. It's really what you employ a lot. But what I think about when I see layering is the sense of time, because it's clear that one area had to dry, another one's built up on top of it. There's a sense of time, but there's also a sense of space. This yes. push and pull. Um, just wondering, when you're working, is this intuitive? Is this serendipitous? Or do you have it pretty much mapped out in your head? <laughs> I, I had a show recently in the uh, in the Ashwa Hall mm -hmm. out in the uh, East Hampton. In Springs. Springs, East Hampton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a particular painting I had there that everyone was curious about because I used a lot of sand in that painting. In that painting. But I had quite a few layers of canvas mm -hmm. as well as cardboard. Mm -hmm. The cardboard has its own consistency. When you put paint on it, uh, it has those ripples uh, that the cardboard is made from. Mm -hmm. If you tear, tear off the first layer, uh, you have another uh, layer of, uh, of uh, cardboard, and, which is done there for you. It's laid there for you to spread paint on top of it and introduce a, a different vocabulary. So this idea also of just the physicality, there's something yeah. very physical about your work. You talk about collaging, not only the board, which again, you're talking about a thickness there. Yeah. Canvas has also a thickness. Um, do you feel that physicality as you're working? Is that something you're really after? What, what, what's, what's going on in your mind? You know, uh, there was a time when I would have a scotch or two. I'm not a drinker anymore. But at that time, I recall having two canvases side by side. And uh, one of the paintings uh, was sold recently. It was called Vortex. It was a beautiful painting, lots of uh, cerulean blues. And uh, just so at the time, had made, not just of a golden, had made a paint that had a consistency that was, uh, it was reflective. There's a different <laughs> terminology for it, but you could add that to your other colors. And uh, I included that in the paint. It, it, it would thicken it, yeah. but it would also give a, a particular sheen, mm -hmm. effort, effort. Effervescence. 
I think is it is mm -hmm. it's so illuminating. Mm -hmm. Iridescent. Iridescent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, that was another piece of vocabulary <laughs> to work with. Okay, Frank, let's go on and start to talk about some of these images. Uh, I wanted to talk about this first one that we see when we walk into the Barry Campbell Gallery. I know the one you're talking yeah. about. It's yeah. so striking, it's so beautiful, and I know why they chose that piece for the entry. It's to pull people in. Yeah. Uh, that's a, a collage that I did for uh, just extend my uh, warehouse here. <laughs> but I wanted to paint on matte board. And that's what I took a piece of matte board, but I used uh, a matte cutter to cut those pieces mm -hmm. and place them individually mm -hmm. so that they would become uh, have a certain pattern, and uh, there's an angle to that painting also yes. Yes. that you see from the top, and there's also an angle from the bottom. It's almost maybe like a weaving or something, too, an yeah. aspect to it, you know. But you know what I was thinking about also, Frank, because I think that you're doing uh, a technique that I've seen a lot of collage artists do, and I'm thinking about loving, where you'll paint onto a sheet of the board but then end up cutting that board and other boards and then you know working all of these uh, elements together to make this one. So it's sort of like a deconstructing and then reconstructing, making something yeah. new out of it. And I got the feeling that was what was happening in this piece. It's, it's awesome. probably what was happening. Yeah. Um, you know, you had mentioned also there was a piece you didn't actually care for at the time. I did not care that you much for that. Yes. I thought it was a little amateurish. <laughs> I'm reaching for a higher level. I'm, I'm past that. But uh, I think it's quite when, when it was, when it was chosen quite, oh, to yeah. go in the gallery, I, I did not object because uh, there's something about uh, Barry Campbell Gallery. Uh, they know what they want and they know how to choose. And they choose wisely. Uh, they came from Spannerman Gallery. Where you showed for many Where I showed and uh, where I did very well. For the first time I was supposed to show with Spannerman, I showed with them out in uh, East Hampton. And uh, our Spannerman said to me, he said, you're pretty good, you're pretty good. And I was thinking to myself, I'm better than pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> He became a great friend because he told me, and maybe another couple of years, we'll take you into New York. I remember. I saw those shows. They were it, stunning. That's what was the advice that was given to me by Rose Slipper, who was one of my writers. And she says, if you want to be somebody, you've got to be in New York. So I said, oh, oh we're going to go to New York. And as it so happened, and he was so much impressed with what I did in his gallery in East Hampton that I moved to New York in one year and had my first show there. So it was, I was in a group show, mm -hmm. but uh, I think, it, I don't know what year it was, but very soon after that, I had my first one man show. Oh, in New York, yeah. Okay. yeah at, at, at that space, I should say. Yeah. yeah that's good. So Your I, first one man show was with Sink though, right? In New York City. The very first one man show, where was that? Was that Sink In Spanaman, you mean? No, no. It, it, was it Sink Gallery? Was that your oh, first Cinque. one man show in the 80s? Yes. In New York? Yeah. yeah. Let's move on to this other piece. It's the one that uh, is a smaller, sort of 10 inch by 10 inch collage. Yeah. That was a piece where I tried to use different kinds of geometric forms. Mm -hmm as well as paint. I think I, I use a little ink also. So it's really for the linear yeah. uh, mm -hmm. aspect structure. Mm -hmm. That I thought I had overdone it, you know. But as I saw it later, when it was reproduced, I was able to enlarge it. And it, to me it was a very striking collage. 
And again, this is all from the period where you were showing at, at Senke, your first show. At Absolutely. Yeah. Let's move on to gray study. Gray study is uh, one in, 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 done during a time when I was decided to create series of paintings, mm -hmm. as I did with the collages. I, opened, I would do a series of them. I did four of these in the gray study. They were all different, but they were all uh, alike. Uh, and the reason why we just had one is because three of them were purchased, and I was happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, but they left me that one. Mm -hmm. So that was taken away. Yeah. And what I'm noticing with this uh, series then is that it's not as many facets, it seems to be larger areas um, of cutout. And uh, the gray paper, of course, is really quite beautiful. But the way that you have handled the paint onto this paper, it really gives a sense of atmosphere and being outdoors. And I, um, I believe that I never know what's going to happen, you know. But just to, for practice, to to elevate the idea, uh, all of those pieces were mounted on another piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I painted the paper first. Oh, I see. The paper wasn't plain but, okay. white not paper okay. or plain mm -hmm. black paper as I have used. Um, I think it gives a, a, a distinction that you don't get with uh, other papers. Mm -hmm. Papers are very important. I used to uh, look in the, uh, the catalog and choose the papers by weight as well as uh, texture. Um, I have some that I did on Japanese paper, specifically because of the speckles that they had in the uh, texture of the, of the paper. And moving on to column from 1996. Column painting. was something I was trying to create, uh, again, with strips of canvas, and also uh, painted canvas. I don't think there's any paper in that um, in that painting, but it was done mostly with uh, gesso and and uh, a mixture of paints in order to reach the color that it has. The column is is the name given to it. You got to call it something so because the red portion. It runs up and down in the center is a column. And then it appears to be even a, a horizontal structure above it that it might be actually holding up too. Yeah. So talking about structure of paintings, um, there is something very architectural about your paintings. You know, there is this sense of structure, as much as there's this release also, but there is structure. There's sort of this combination of... of uh, yeah, I expressionistic quality, but then also something that's really very yeah. planned also. Speaking of very uh, expressionistic, uh, how about approach from the far side? Oh, from, from yes. the far side is a painting. Yeah. That was done, uh, there were two paintings. One still exists. Uh, I think the other one is still in the gallery. Uh, one of them, this, this particular painting, one day I think, uh, a group of maybe five curators came from the uh, Smithsonian to look at my work. And they were confused to the extent that they could not make a choice. So they went That's back. That's a great yeah. place to be in, yes. <laughs> so the good thing was they went back and they reported to the chief curator. Uh, Virginia Mecklenburg, I think her name was. Mm -hmm. And she came on her own to New York <laughs> to see this nice. fantastic painter. Nice. And uh, it turned out that it was me who was the painter and it was my work that was chosen for uh, the um, collection in the Smithsonian, where it is now. Great. It's from the series then, or is it? Yes, yes, yes. wonderful, okay. And Blue Patch. Blue Patch, I did 
uh, sometime before I went into Spanerman. Uh, that painting is admired by a lot of people. Uh, Christine, who was my dealer mm -hmm. there, as well as Martha, was uh, really taken with that particular painting. So her being excited about it excited other people, and it was in the show. So they decided to put it in the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's on the face of the catalog, the, uh, the brochure for the show. I call it the, the blue patch. Mm -hmm. The blue patch. Yeah. That's it right there. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that was chosen by the students at the Roth School in East Hampton. Oh, yes. As mm -hmm. their choice for you to get the best abstract painter. That was their assignment uh, for the end of the year. Yeah. And they were given choices from their mm -hmm. students and stu artists in the area. Mm -hmm. And they chose, they chose that. Frank and this piece. And this one, you're collaging canvas yeah. onto the canvas. It's, it's, it's yeah. pretty, it's a perfect sample of the collages that I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. And with this one, structurally also, I feel as though it is sitting on something. Of course, with the column piece, it was holding something up, but this one seems like the weight might be sitting yeah. on. When, I, when I did the painting, I didn't think of it as mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. you know. But structurally, but looking at it now. It's something mm -hmm. uh, to extend the vocabulary of the painting. Yeah. There's a weight to it, but yet I think because of all the painting and, and the surface around it, there's also this kind of lightness of being also. Uh, you, you do end up having these contrasts, I think, in many ways too. I would do, a, a lot of times I would do a first dual painting. Then I would uh, do a, another layer of color, which was usually white to allow uh, the under painting to show through. And that's what happened in that particular painting. Nice. The under painting is very important. This is a beaut here, this red piece. Ooh, I'm gonna come in close so they can again see the buildup and the surface, although they can see me also. <laughs> We've done in 65. I mean, when I was 65. When you were, <laughs> not in 65, <laughs> but when you were, were 65, okay. Uh-huh. And so we've got a piece here also. I got a, mm. I got a prize at the uh, member show for doing that. The Guild Hall? Mm-hmm. And you, rem you remembered um, Bertina Hunter? Yes, I do, because she was actually related to my neighbor. Uh, oh. They were sisters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gil, uh, Naomi Gill. Oh, and here's some of your brushes. Here's your some of your work table here, Frank. Wonderful. <laughs> good, good. And this is, these things were where the, the wild music came out of. And, and the music really you would blast, listen to. We could really blast it. Mm -hmm. I want to show it. some of these. Uh, these are large invitations or something, and, and sort of that's catalogs. A, that's a painting, mm -hmm. a card for a painting that uh, Barry Campbell has in oh, the gallery. Yes. Uh, that painting was sent to Italy for a show. Mm -hmm. And here is the blue piece, mm. yep, again. They have that in the window. Mm -hmm. It looks so beautiful. And here is Frank's wife, Juanita. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and another wonderful piece. This is your work wall, yeah. Frank, right? This is the I wall built, that I built you built wall. this. Mm -hmm. So that I would have a place to hang. Hang the work. Mm -hmm. You will be in the Cinque show, which opens actually this May. You know, the show actually this opens, May. yes. Yep, May 3rd, um, I believe. Uh, yeah, and it's up that. until July 20, July 4th, actually. 
So, and we are both in that show, right? All right. And we have shown together. This yes, is not have. our first time. <laughs> it's That's about right. time. Right? Yeah, we said it's been a while, but we're <laughs> back together again. Yes, we are. And thanks so much for having us here in your studio. I enjoyed this. enjoyed talking with you. And uh, I want to thank the Art Students League for uh, I, putting I all this together. I do that you got the information that you require. Yes, <laughs> yes. And your connection to Sinke and your artwork. That is what we require. Thanks so much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us.